My name is Tanya Corder, and I'm the principal here at North Harden, and I want to welcome you for coming over. Um, I think I heard that you walked. So hopefully you walked in a brisk pace because it's very cold outside. But um, we had to stall a little bit right there. We were waiting on some student leaders to arrive. But we kind of started out asking you some questions about what this day is about. Um, here in a week or two, our counselor, Ms. Michelle Russell and Miss Slavin, who will be talking to you in a minute, she's our transition readiness coach. She will be coming over to your school to talk to you about all the classes that we offer here at North Harden and to talk to you about life up here at the high school and how it's different from the middle school to the high school. They will be talking to you about scheduling and picking your classes for next year. That is coming your way in a, the next week or two. So it's soon. So before we show up over at North Middle and we say, pick your classes, and you're kind of like, I don't know, you know, but some of you know, um, today is to expose you to some of our elective classes, something different than English, math, um, reading, science, and social studies. We do have those, and you do have to take them, but you get a choice in your elective classes. So today, you're going to be going through some classrooms um, with some demonstrations. You're going to see real time what it's like to go in a business class, a family consumer science class, an ag class. And so this is your day to maybe if you don't know, maybe you weren't one of the ones that raised your hands, to figure it out. And then when we come to your school in a week or two and you're seeing these classes on paper, you're going to say, oh, yeah, that was the, the class where we heard the babies cry or that was the class where we went into the machinery uh, shop room. So we're glad you're here. Welcome today. And we look very forward to having you in August as freshmen. All right. Miss Slavin. Um, hello, everybody. I am Miss Slavin. I am your guys' transition coach, which a lot of people are like, I don't even know what that is. Um, so transition means to change from one thing to another. And so I focus on helping you guys change from high school to whatever you want to do after that. So whether that's college or going straight into the workforce. And I know that sounds crazy for you guys to even think about right now because you're just getting ready to enter into high school. But it's never too soon to start thinking about your future. And in fact, your future starts the day that you guys step into our building in August, your first day as a freshman. Um, so we want to give you guys all the information up front so that you can make the best choices to get the most out of your four years here and to prepare you for that transition when you leave us into you know life whatever that path is going to be for you so the majority of your guys' tour today is going to focus on our career pathways because guys it's not about college or career everybody plans on having some sort of career unless you plan on like hitting the lottery and just bumming around which is a really solid goal and I'm trying to do that one too but we ain't there yet um, everybody is going to have a career so whether you're going straight from high school into that career or if you're going to college to get education to go into that career everybody's goal is to have a career to live the lifestyle that you want to live so career pathways are for everybody and we actually offer 34 starting next year where that number is supposed to go up to 37. That is a ridiculous number of pathways guys. The schools and the districts around us do not have that many. So you're in a really good spot to be able to get the education and training for just about any career pathway that you want to do. So I'm just going to give you guys some brief information about Career Pathways, and then we're going to let our senior leaders talk for a little bit before we start your tours. But no, I am going to be over at your guys' school twice. We're going to be over one day where we bring you all your scheduling materials. Uh, there will be a book that has a bunch of information in it, so if you guys have questions, you can look in there. Um, and then we will also be over there a second day in your classrooms to be able to answer questions for you about all the elective options that you have. Make sure you're signed up for the right classes to make sure you're on track to graduate um, and help you guys answer questions about your your career pathway so if you have any additional questions today that don't get answered I've been telling all the groups go ahead and type them into your cell phone send yourself a text message put in your notes whatever you want to do and that way when I'm over there in February if you if you haven't forgotten you can just go ahead and pull up your phone and ask the questions at that time because we will be there to help you every step of the way so first things first career pathways does anybody know why you would want to do a career pathway while you're in high school Yes. The experience. Okay. What do you mean by that? 
um, it would be, be more beneficial for you if you went to high school before college or even going out in the blue and not having any knowledge of what you're wanting to do. Okay, so he actually said two things there. He said experience and then knowledge. And both of those things are going to be what you get out of your career pathway classes. You're going to get the knowledge to be able to do the job. So you will literally be trained to do a lot of these careers the day you leave graduation. You can walk right into the job field and start jobs making real money. We try to only do career pathways that are going to put you above the poverty line. So we're not talking minimum wage and all that kind of stuff. We're talking a real salary with benefits, retirement, all that stuff that you need to be a real adult. You're going to get the knowledge to be able to do those jobs. You're going to take a test and you're going to get certified and you're going to legitimately be able to do these career pathways the second you leave high school. Um, the other thing he mentioned was experience. When you guys graduate, you're still really young. But when you walk into a job and you have the knowledge from the classes that you took with us and you have experience from our internships, co-op classes, and our apprenticeships that we offer with all of our career pathways, you're going to be extremely employable even as a young adult because every single one of our career pathways up here have some sort of co-op, internship, or apprenticeship that you can do, which basically means that during school, you're going to a workplace and getting experience in whatever job field that is. So you're not only going to get certified from taking the classes, getting the knowledge, and then passing a test to earn your certification, but you're also going to get job experience, and all that stuff is going to make you highly employable. If you're planning to go to college and not go straight into the work field, um, that's also going to help you get into college. Some of these college programs are competitive, like nursing. There's a wait list to get into a lot of nursing programs. But if you do all these classes while you're in high school, you're already certified and you have job experience, that's going to help you get accepted into the program over other people. That's what makes you more employable and more competitive. Also, a lot of these career pathways have a test at the end that you have to pass so that you'll be certified. And a lot of these tests have college credit tied to them. So if you want to leave high school and go to college to further your career, as opposed to going straight into the workforce, you're going to be able to get college credit for free that you didn't have to pay for by doing your career pathway. So with all of that in mind, everybody should be looking at the list, sorry if you can't really see it, um, and starting to think about which career pathway is going to help me because there's no reason not to do one. It's going to give you college credit. It's going to give you work experience. It's also going to give you certifications if you want to go straight to work. So. How do you complete a career pathway? Guys, the magic number is four. You need four classes. And so if you think about the fact that you're here freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior year, it would make sense that we want you to try and start your career pathways next year, your freshman year, so that you can take one class each year. Some of you are going to change your mind, and that's fine. We can have some room in your schedule to double you up sometimes so that you can still complete your pathway if you started one as a freshman and then you change your mind as a junior. We want you to get the experience and figure out what you're interested in and what you're not interested in so when you leave us, you're ready to transition. So it's okay to try things out. You're also going to hear from our senior leaders that you can do more than one pathway. You don't have to just pick one thing. Try two. Try three. Um, you're going to have room in your schedule to be able to do that. And we'll talk more about that when I'm over at your school um, doing the one-on-one -on -one scheduling with you guys. So before we get started hearing from our student leaders, does anybody have any questions about career pathways? That's okay, because a lot of them are going to get answered for you guys today, or you'll come up with questions as you see stuff and hear stuff. Um, so the first thing I'm going to have our student leaders talk about is our career and technical student organizations, also known as CTSOs. You guys will probably just call them clubs. So we have career pathways here, and we have student organizations to where you can get involved at school. Guys, the best thing you can do when you get over here in terms of figuring everything out and figuring out what you want to do and figuring out where you belong and what you enjoy is to get involved in something. And I know that sounds super scary. I remember being a middle schooler and I was like, is anybody doing that? Are you doing that? If you're not doing that, I'm not doing that. And you're just like scared to branch out. But here's the thing. Four years is going to go by really fast. And then it's going to be all about you. You're not necessarily going to go to, to the work field with your bestie. You're not necessarily going to go to college with your bestie. So now is the time to start branching out and doing stuff that is just for you. And so even if you don't have your best friend going to the same club as you, it's okay because you're going to meet tons of people there. Um, our clubs are a great way to stay involved, um, but also to get to know people and make a lot of friends. So they're going to talk about their um, clubs that are related to their career pathways that they're involved in. 
Hi guys, my name is Bailey Hess. Um, I want to talk to you, start out talking to you about FCCLA, which stands for Family, Career, and Community Leaders of America. I'm currently the North Harden Chapter President of that. Zach, is, Zach right here is our Officer of Membership, and then he is the Regional First Vice President, and I am the Regional uh, Officer of Membership, and I'm applying for state this year. So FCCLA is mostly leadership, and it's not just leadership, it's also following skills. You'll meet a lot of friends. And before I say anything else about it, I just want to tell you guys that whenever I came into high school, I was not interested in FCCLA at all. And I joined, and now I'm the president because I loved it that much. So you just have to join things so you know that you like them. You'll learn a lot of leadership skills in FCCLA. You'll do a lot of community service, a lot of volunteer work. You'll get to compete in things like you could compete in culinary, life event, planning. Um, there's a lot, a long list of things you can compete in. And if there's anything you're interested in, I promise you there's a competition for it. So uh, you'll just learn a lot about leadership. Um, it's like I said before, it's super, super fun. Um, you'll enjoy it. It's a wide range of a lot of interests into one club. So there's FCCLA. Hello, I'm Zachary Day Carter. Um, I'm actually in two clubs, okay? I'm in the FCCLA, as Bailey stated, and I'm also in DECA. And pretty much, um, like Star Events, the competition that we do, I did public policy advocacy, and it was based on poverty. So I wanted to like make a better, uh, improve a law that there already is to help people that can't afford as much things. And then for DECA, I'm doing decision making. And so pretty much I'm just taking a test and then I do a role play and talk to some judges about how what we're talking about can apply to the world world. So I'm Jaira <laughs> and I'm in, I've been in DECA for two years now. And basically it helps you a lot with community service and you get out of school, which I probably shouldn't tell y'all, but it's okay. <laughs> So we went to Nashville. <laughs> we went to Nashville a few months ago, and we got to go to the Titans Learning Lab. So you got to like learn a lot about like if you play sports. No, if you play sports, like we got to like see all the jobs they do with the football players and stuff. Um, so then the jobs that she was talking about was like sports marketing and all that. So they get to work with the players and do all of that. And they also have parties that they get to plan for the players. Or if they wanted to get married in one of the stadiums or something, they got to do that in the Titans Stadium. And we also, in DECA, we get to know each other a lot. It's one of the places that I met most of my friends or where most of my friends are in. So it's a really good club to join if you want to do that. Also, um, our gyra right here, our vice president, <laughs> um, she's in one of the business classes and she decided to start a lip gloss business, right? And she learned how to do this all by joining a business class. All right, so my name is Joseph Smith III. Uh, I'm also in two career paths also. I'm in an ROTC career path, and I'm also an FFA career path. But <clears throat> my main, I guess, focus is pretty much FFA. FFA stands for Future Farmers of America. I know a lot of people think, like, you know, well, hey, I don't want to be a farmer or anything like that. But that's not what it's all about, honestly. It's agriculture is literally everything, pretty much anything you could think of. I can relate to how it relates to agriculture. You know, if you want to be a vet, that's your, that's the way to go. You know, if you want to be a welder, plumber, stuff like that, if you like working with your hands, that's stuff you want to do. Let's say that, you know, <clears throat> I mean, really, anything that you want to do, it connects to FFA. And being that that's my career path, I, the way I actually ended up joining FFA was just, um, you know, I, I wanted to do something different. And um, I mean, like like all these other great clubs, it's, it, it's not just about, you know, just doing a club. It's about finding something to do during the day, find some people to hang out with. Because I mean, honestly, half the people in here, you guys aren't going to talk to when you get to high school. Y'all won't be friends. I mean, I'm just keeping, I'm just keeping real with you guys. You know, people are going to change you get to high school. You know, some people are going to be stuck behind, still doing the same stuff they did in middle school. And you're going to surround yourself with people that are still going to do the same thing that you're doing. So that's why when you join a club, you're going to be around the people that are still trying to be positive and, you know, motivate you to do what you got to do. So that's why I really end up joining FFA. And I mean, I love every beat of it. All right. Pretty much like he said, you can be in clubs and try different things. But not only that, if you take the classes that you want to take, as a freshman going towards your career path, by the time you're a senior, you get to make money for being in those positions. Who knows what co-op is? Anybody? All right, well, pretty much co-op is a place where you can go out to the world world and apply what you learned in school. So for instance, I'm in the business career pathway. Right now I work at State Farm, okay? Um, before I worked at State Farm, I worked at an attorney's office. And pretty much at the attorney's office, what I did was file for people, make phone calls, and here and there I got to attend in the court. 
okay? Then at State Farm, I call, I make quotes, um, and pretty much each quote I make, I get money. And I get paid a good amount of money just by working there for the four hours I do. So make sure y'all keep that in mind when y'all are picking a class. And just to add on to what Joseph said about FFA, uh, you do get a lot of opportunities that comes with FFA. Like I know he was just wanting to talk about how he got he started welding here, and then we also lead our pathways on to EC3. A lot of them can connect into that. So he makes he got his welding certificate, and now he got hired on at 16. So he's already welding and having starting his career in welding at 16. So also we do offer a lot of scholarships with FFA if you're wanting to go to college and. I know FFA, you think like farmer, some of y'all, maybe. But a lot of people that are in FFA, we don't even live on farms. And I'm battalion commander in JRTC. It's like top position, you know, that's uh, it's a really cool position to have. Um, but there are also tons of other leadership positions that you can have, like our commands are majors right here. Um, got our S5, S4, you know, all these cool people and stuff. Um, and in JRTC, we don't have like clubs. We have like special teams and like there's tons of different things you could do. There's uh, J Labs, that's more of like, kind of like online competitions. There's Raider Team, where if you're really athletic, you get to do a lot of cool stuff. There's Honor Guard, Color Guard, you know, all drill, all these other cool things to do. And like, each week there's like a uniform you get to wear, and that's really cool. So like, as you kind of rank up and you like earn awards and ribbons, you know, you can wear those and like show everybody in the school, like this is a bunch of cool stuff that I'm doing and like I'm earning cool recognition for it and earning leadership positions, you know, as you rank up and stuff. So that's all really cool. Um, and so this is where planning ahead comes into play, guys. Um, for instance, JROTC. I get a lot of kids who don't decide until their senior year that they're going to go into the military. And really it ends up being, I don't know what I'm going to do. So I'm going to join the military or I want to go to college, but I don't have a way to pay for it. So I'm going to go into the military. The only problem with changing your mind or deciding at that point is that you haven't done our ROTC pathway. So you've got this kid who decided as a senior they're going to join into the military standing right next to one of our ROTC students. And guess what happens? If you did ROTC for three years, you're going in at a higher rank and a higher pay. So you're standing right there next to the same kid that you graduated with and you already outrank them and every month you make more money than them because you planned ahead. So if you don't decide by your sophomore year that that's something you want to do or an option for you and start those classes, you won't go in making extra money and you won't be a higher rank. So that's why we want to get to talking to you guys now. So I know the future sounds like a long time away, but we need to start making decisions or taking classes to try things out and figure out what you want to do starting now. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and take our tour and hopefully you guys can see a lot of stuff. You can ask your tour guides questions all along the tour. And then again, I'll be over to your school to answer some more questions. Sorry guys. <clears throat> My name is Joseph Spence III. I'm going to be your tour guide today here at North Harden. Uh, a little bit about myself. So I'm a junior. I used to go to North Middle. So you guys probably know me if you guys went there. And uh, yeah, that's all it is today. And we're just really today our plan here is just to give you guys a background about North Harden, just the different career paths that you guys can do. So we're going to get started. All right, cool. So you guys gonna be able to see North Harden. I'm telling you, it's the best school in Harden County. Let's go and get it started. So the first one we're gonna go to is Coach Southwood. He's gonna be your um, your computer engineer teacher, stuff like that. If that is any that interest you guys, let's go and take it down and see how it is. And do any of you guys already know what you guys want to do for high school yet, or any anything outside the workforce out of, out of high school? EC3. What do you want to do? A vet. Okay, that's what's up. We got a vet class too. What is it? Cooking? Culinary? Anybody else? What else do y'all want to do? Any else y'all know what y'all want to do yet? Okay. Hopefully by the end of the day, you guys will know what you guys want to do. All right, so first, hey, do any of you guys play any sports or anything? No sports? Nobody play sports here? What do you play? Basketball. Basketball? Okay, so if you play basketball and you plan on playing at the high school level, this is going to be your name right here on this wall right here. You know, these are all our basketball players. We have some more out here, but that's all of it. If you guys end up playing any sports or anything, you better get your name on the wall if you make it on the team. Um, that's, just, that's just another cool part about it. A quick little tour of North. When you come here, if you, if you as a freshman, you'll probably ride the bus here, and you guys are coming through these three bay doors right here, and this will be your first entryway into North Harden. Um, this is assistant principal's office. Hopefully none of you guys have to go in there because, uh, you know, it's not, it's not a place I'd want to be. Uh, you know, I don't really go in there too much unless I say, hey, hey you got one of your stairways up to the upstairs. All right, guys, this is our first room, Coach Southwood room. Welcome. This is 
Uh, this actually is our digital literacy class. What we do in digital literacy is we learn about Microsoft Office. So we learn about Microsoft Word, we learn about Microsoft Excel, Microsoft PowerPoint. Some of them are on Microsoft Word, some of them are Microsoft PowerPoint. What we go through and do is learn the buttons, the ins and outs of the, the programs, and then we eventually test for MOS certification. Uh, MOS, Microsoft Office Special Certification, is a great certification to have. It can help you be uh, get a job, get more money, it's a great resume builder, some things in that. This is an introductory class, so this will be one of the two possible classes you can take next year. The other one is going to be Business and Marketing Essentials. Business and Marketing Essentials is a class that's going to give you a little information about all of our classes from the, beginning, the very beginning all the way up to the end. So you're going to learn a little bit about marketing, accounting, entrepreneurship, uh, computers are throwing in there. So you're going to get a little bit of everything and you can find out, hey, I like this marketing stuff, what do I got to do? I like this accounting stuff, what do I got to do? So you can go and find which way you want. We have a lot of advanced classes, accounting, entrepreneurship, uh, office, office administration, uh, co-op is an advanced class. Co-op is an opportunity for you to um, come to school first, second, third period. Once you're done with those periods, you sign out, you can go to work. Uh, it's an opportunity for you to earn money or you're earning credits and you're helping to raise, save money for a car, pay bills, college, whatever it may be. We also have a school store class that meets with Ms. Geyser third period. And what they do is they actually run a school store out of the cafeteria during lunch. So that's a great thing that they do. Uh, some other things, we have a club called FBLA. This is my side of the club. Uh, this is one of the clubs we have in the business department. FBLA is Future Business Leaders of America. And what they do is we enrich you more into business activities and business stuff going throughout. So if you want to learn more about accounting, you want to learn more about business marketing, we can do that. And what we're getting ready to do in that right now is we're getting ready to have a competition March 17th up in Spalding. We meet with a bunch of other schools around the area. We compete in actual tests. If we finish first, second, or third, we go on to state. We go up to there in April. If you finish first, you go to nationals. It's a great opportunity for the students to learn more about business. Uh, we get out, we do community service. Uh, we try to do some field trips, a lot of different things within there to kind of enrich yourself more into the business world. So that's a little bit overview, quick overview about business and what it is. But what I want to do today is if you look up on that wall, uh, I'm going to put you kind of in a business situation to kind of see what it's about. Uh, I actually do use this program in one of our classes in the Business and Marketing Essentials to kind of help kids to understand how to operate and run and work with a business. Because what you're doing in this, uh, it's called Lemonade Stand, is you have to understand about pricing, you have to understand about supplies, you have to understand about inventory, how all of that works, you have to understand the situation of the environment, is it hot, is it cold, is it raining, what price do I set it at, you know, how popular it is, and it really simulates a great thing about business. And what I have done is I have several people around the room who have this program up, and what they're going to do is they're going to allow you to sit down and play like a little seven day simulation to kind of see what business is really about. So if I would, can I get my volunteers to raise your hand please? All right, so I've got a couple over here. I got a couple up here. If you could just go around, find those volunteers and they'll let you sit down and take the lemonade stand. Just kind of walk around guys. Let's mingle. We are doing what he said, like the lemonade stand to help you guys understand like business better. So if you want to sit down. All right. So what you'll do is this is what the game is. You will click on how many days you want to do it. So we're going to go seven days and then you'll start with $20 in the beginning. All right. And then you have to go through and buy what you want. You have to buy cups. So we'll do about, I'd say 50 would be good for now. And then lemons. This is just to show you like how to like save and make profit off of different things, I guess. Um, lemons, you need a lot of lemons. 
uh, sugar. You could use 20 should be fine. And then ice, just do 100. So from $20, you went down to 11.65. And then you'll go here. How much do you think you would want to sell a cup of lemonade for him to be able to make profit off of it? Just saying the lower the price, the better. <laughs> I was doing it when I was over here doing it, not that long ago, I was doing it for 10 cents and I made bank. <laughs> um, so price per cup, you said 50? All right, how many lemons do you want in each pitcher? All right, what about sugar? And how much ice? Pay attention to the temperature too, because whether how hot or cold it is, it depends on how much ice they would want. So 75 degrees, that's kind of cool, but four should be fine. So you'll press OK, and then you could sit here and watch the entire day, but you can fast forward it too. And then people will just go by and keep buying lemonade if they want it. And as you can tell, he said 50 cents, and nobody is buying the lemonade. <laughs> so we're broke. No, you still have $11.65 in your thing, but the cheaper it is, the more they will buy it. So you said 50 cents. Does anyone else want to do a price? So 25, okay, so 25 or 15? 15. All right, so we will do 15 cents now and 72 degrees. We will take this down to three cubes of ice. Um, and then, okay, and now people are actually buying the lemonade because the price is a lot lower than it was earlier. And you can keep track of how much you're making down here and then it'll show you how much you've sold at the end of the day. Like, you're 3% popular, customer satisfaction is 73 and you sold 33 cups. The thing about the tour today is we're not really, don't get me wrong, college is very important. But you know, sometimes college is for everyone. So we're doing career pathways today. And that was just one of the pathways that we offer here at North. We offer plenty, plenty, plenty more uh, pathways here at North. But that was one of them. Next one I'm about to go to is agriculture. So agriculture is gonna be kind of like, you know, how many of you guys like to work, your hand, work with your hands? You do? Okay, okay, yeah. So when you guys get here, this will probably be a pathway that a lot of you guys may want to invest in or look at. Um, so I call this memory lane, to be honest with you. You know, if you if you look to your right, here go all, and these aren't all, and we have a lot more. But here go just some of our awards that we won here at North Harden. Uh, you know, when the state in basketball, football championship, bishop baseball, uh, soccer, you know, all of it. So you know, I mean, hey, North Harden, that's a winning school. I love being a Trojan, and I wouldn't trade for anything else. The uh, you know, if you're an egg, you can leave school, go out there to the um, to the greenhouse. We have chickens out there looking at maybe getting some goats. You know, what other school in Harder County offers that? You said chickens and goats. Yes, we have chickens out there right now. We used to have rabbits. Um, so the pathway, if you want to do that, that'd be your agriculture pathway. And then a club would be FFA, which I'm in. So guys, like I was saying, this is actually my pathway. You can be in more than one pathway. So I'm in like the agriculture and military pathway, which would be ROTC. So these are, this is one of our ag teachers. We have two ag teachers. We have Mr. Ritter and Ms. Hall. And he's pretty much going to tell you a little bit about his pathway about himself. So I'm Mr. Ritter, I'm one of the Ag teachers here at North Harden. So today I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the three pathways that we offer here at the school. So of our three pathways, we have Ag Mechanics, we have Animal Science, and we have Horticulture. Any of you all have any idea what any of that is? So if you like to work on things, that's the Ag Mechanics side of things. So that's where we do carpentry, we do plumbing, electricity, welding, engine repair. All of that is encompassed into one class. Well, actually several classes. So we also offer animal science. So if you like animals or you want to possibly go that vet route, those courses are particularly for you. So with the vet science class, we actually offer a dual credit. So as a senior, 
you can sign up, take this dual credit class, and actually graduate with college credit. So that's kind of a step ahead of the rest of your classmates when you do dual credit. So horticulture, we actually have a fully operational greenhouse. So with our greenhouse, we start seedlings, we transplant, we water, we fertilize, we make sure we don't have any pests or insects, and then we open it up and sell it to the public. We actually clear out that whole greenhouse. I think last year, I think we sold like 50 to 75 hanging baskets in two days. So we've got a pretty good reputation with the community. A lot of people come back every year and buy from us. So people place their orders, we put their orders together, they come and pick them up. So somebody asked last period about like how does this lead into EC3? There isn't really any ag classes offered at EC3. However, when we have students that take like the small power class or the ag power class, that tends to help in preparing them for that automotive classes. My ag construction, we actually do a welding unit in there. That prepares them when they go to EC3 to do the welding pathway over there. So, Quick thing about that, guys. So if any of you guys, how, what's the age group in here? 13, 14? Okay, so you guys still have a little bit of time to think about getting your first job. But when you guys get to high school, you guys, you know, you're going to be like, you know, I can't wait to drive and everything. I don't know if your parents were like mine, but my mom made me go and go get a job before I started driving so I could pay for my own gas. Yeah, I know. You're looking like, well, I got to pay for my own gas. You got to grow up at some point in time. You can't live off mom all the time. But after that, you know, I was looking for a job, and I didn't want to work fast food or anything. So I was like, hmm, what can I do that's different? And I came here to North Harden, and I got my welding. I started welding here at uh, North Harden, and then I went to EC3, and I got my welding certificate. And I was able to take that to another job employer at 16 years old, because I'm only 16 right now, guys. And I was able to take that, and I was able to take it to a job where you have to be you know, 18 to work at. And I was able to take that, being that I had my welding degree, and I was able to weld, they hired me at 16. So, you know, rather than making, you know, 725, which is minimum wage, which would be making somewhere at like, you know, a fast food place, you guys would be making a lot more for pretty much, you know, just coming to school, essentially, you know? I mean, because I mean, the school pays for all your degrees. You know, if you, if you want to be a pilot or whatever, they'll pay for your pilot's license. You know, you want to be a welder, they'll pay for your welding degree. You know, all those different things. Like, while you guys are in high school, take advantage of all the free stuff because as soon as you turn 18, everything's going to start costing money. So make sure you do everything you can. So when we're doing these tours, pay attention because, you know, like, I know you want to be a vet. If you go out to college, you know, you want to get your, you know, your, your vet degree or animal science degree, they're going to charge you a lot of money for that. But you can go and get a pre-step into that and already go in, you know, with half your credits already. You're only paying half the money. The less money you have to pay, the more money you save, which means the more money you make, you know. Think about it like that. But what about what? Doctor? We, we have a, um, we have the, um, the, medical yeah, we have the medical pathway here. So uh, I think it's like CNA or something. I, I'm not big on the whole uh, medical thing, but I mean, if that's, that's true, that's what you should do. We offer it here at North Harden, and then not that, um, your, what you do here, will carry over to EC3, and you'll be able to walk around in scrubs all day. That, that, yeah. Scrubs, you know, like what, what the doctors were. Yeah, you'll, you'll be able to graduate high school with an actual, not full doctor degree, but with a CNA uh, license. So, you know, when you graduate, or even while you're in high school, I know some people that still walk around, they're still doing um, the whole medical pathway in high school. So, any more questions? Anybody else got any questions about a pathway we offer here? Because I bet you we do. One other opportunity that you all have I mean, you're not limited to just take one pathway. Samantha here, she takes three different pathways. She's in the ag mechanics, the animal science, and she does the automotives at EC3. So, but there is another opportunity upon completion of one of the pathways is you have the opportunity to do what they call co-op. Basically with co-op, that just implies that you come to school in the morning, you get your math, your English, or whatever your required uh, classes are out of the way, and then you actually leave. Like, you go straight to work. And when I say go straight to work, I mean you don't just go to volunteer. You're getting paid by the hour. It's like a real job. So typically, we try to find kids that co-op position that relates to their pathway. Like, I've had kids that work at True Value and Radcliffe that are AgMec. I've got a boy right now currently working at Vine Grove Small Engines. So uh, Sam is actually set up to do co-op this spring in our third trimester. So she'll come in and basically have class periods one, two, and three, and then leave for four and five. 
and go out and work. So I've had kids that are animal science that co-op at uh, Eat Town Animal Hospital. So there's a good opportunity for a lot of you all to do that sort of thing. You guys also have to remember, with each class you guys go to, there's a club that goes along with it. So let's say you don't take the class, but you're like, you know, this is something I really want to do. Our club is FFA. So you guys just left the um, FB, FBLA, Future Business Leaders of America. Well, ours is FFA, which is Future Farmers of America. And I know everyone's like, well, you know, you know, I don't want to be a farmer, or, you know, whatever, whatever. But that's not the case. My vet man right here, FFA would be the perfect thing for you. And I mean, and I, and I mean, I say that honestly because when you go to college and you apply, they're gonna be like, "Well, what what have you done, right?" And you're gonna be like, "Well, you know, I went to school, and uh, you know, I just I just didn't do anything." They're gonna look at you like, "Hmm, you didn't put any extra effort until you've really been this, you know." But if you have the FFA on your back, FFA, you're dealing with everything. You're dealing with, it. and 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 I say that that you're dealing with everything because when when you, when you go and you know you're messing with the animals and you're doing your different vet pathways and everything. You know, that's those hours that you put in for there, write those write all those hours down. Now, I mean you're not gonna remember every single thing you did, but I mean just general statements, you know. I served at the animal shelter. Boom, you know, write it down. And just keep all those things. So when you go to college and you apply for you know your different vet scholarships and everything, they're they're gonna they're gonna accept you like that because like so let's say Samantha me and Samantha were standing here together, right? And me and her both wanted to be vets. She doesn't have the FFA, but I do, right? That's gonna be my extra foot in the door that's gonna set us apart. Because right now, you guys are all standing in a line pretty much. You guys are all on a clean slate. But it's about, it's, it's about what you do when you get here that's gonna set you guys apart. So when you guys, if you guys, you know, start doing the extra momentum, you know, to do different things, to really step outside of your bubble, because I mean, it's gonna be uncomfortable. You're gonna, you're gonna have to do things that you never ever thought you would do. But then when you do them, and you face those different challenges, they're gonna pay off in the long run. How many of you guys know about scholarships in here? Nobody knows about a scholarship? Guys, those scholarships are gonna save your life because college is expensive. And I know all you guys in here wanna to go to college, don't you? Just about? Yeah, college is not cheap. You wanna get K through 12 free. That extra, that extra education you guys wanna do, that's gonna cost you money. So all these different things you guys do now, let's say you know, um, you, know you do your club, you, you, you serve at, for the community, all those things, they have scholarships for all of it, you know? These different things that you guys do, make sure you write them all down. Because they're gonna pay off in the long run. But if you guys don't have any more questions about FFA or about the agriculture pathway, we're gonna head down to the choir room. If you guys like to sing anything like that, that'll be the way to go. I'm gonna tell you guys right now, this is probably my favorite part about North Harden is the choir room. Because hey, our choir is the way to go. I'm gonna tell y'all right now, before you walk in here, make sure you're ready. Because they're gonna bring the smoke. This is the North Harden Mixed Choir, and we have students that are 9th through 12th grade. And like I was telling the kids down here, if you're a male, you go into this choir as a ninth grader. If you're a female, you go into my second or third grade class. Right there. 
be believers, be leaders, be astronauts, be champions, be truth seekers, be students, be teachers, be politicians, be preachers. Be believers, be leaders, be astronauts, be champions, be second period um, women's choir that is all female and a third period concert choir and they're all female too. So it was nice meeting you all. Enjoy your tour. Bye bye. Bye guys. We're going to tell you a little bit about Project Lead the Way and about engineering today and hopefully get some of you guys excited about getting into this career path because it can be a whole lot of fun because we get to do some neat stuff, a lot of hands-on stuff where we build things with uh, wood and then we'll also use the VEX robotic stuff back there some in engineering one a lot in engineering two you get to build things like this bridge okay and uh, and then you get to smash it to find out whether or not your calculations were good and whether or not at the end of the day people driving on your bridge are gonna have a good day or a bad day okay so I like to tell you guys up front that engineering is math okay there is a lot of math that goes into engineering. But you don't have to love math to be good at engineering. You just have to be willing to put in the work and sit down and do the calculations. And at the end of the day, if you can do that, then what you're gonna find out is there's a lot of neat things, a lot of doors that get opened for you uh, through the pathway of engineering. We've got two classes here at North, Intro to Engineering and also Engineering Part Two, which is Principles of Engineering. First class is going to teach you about the design process where we start with brainstorming. You come up with an idea and then you brainstorm uh, other ideas to figure out how you can solve a problem. How many of you guys have seen the, the TV show Shark Tank? Okay, so that's basically what they're doing. They've, they've discovered a problem and they've designed a solution for it, right? They've come up with a product or something that they think will help them to solve that problem. And that's exactly what we do in engineering. We come up with scientific answers to solve real world problems. You guys use engineering every day. You don't think about it a lot, but you do. The roads that you drive on, the cars that you drive, even when you're sitting at home on the couch and you're watching TV or you're playing Xbox or PS4, an engineer has had a part of what you're doing. Because even in those video games, they have software engineers that are going inside and they're taking physics and they're putting them into those games so that when you do something in the game, it's cause and effect. Something happens in game and then everything else around it reacts to it in a way that is similar to what happens in the real world. That's their goal. My brother is an engineer and you guys don't remember it because you weren't born yet, but when Hurricane Katrina came through New Orleans, uh, the levee failed. The levee was there and it was designed to hold back Lake Pontchartrain to keep it from flooding New Orleans and the Ninth Ward. Well, when Hurricane Katrina came through, the, the levee failed. And so Lake Pontchartrain came flooding in. The Ninth Ward was completely underwater. And a lot of people lost their homes. They lost their possessions. Some even lost their lives. So my brother's company in Louisville got called in and they said, hey, come and look at this levee and help us figure out what went wrong why it failed, and how we can build a new one so that it's stronger and it'll hold up better. 
And so when, you, when you're an engineer, you get to do some neat things like that. You also get to use, in here we use a program called Auto Inventor. And Auto Inventor is a 3D modeling software where you get to digitally create things in a virtual world and then turn around and hopefully get to create them in the real world. So this is one of the things we're working on right now in engineering part one. This is a puzzle cube. And so we've got all these little three quarter inch wooden blocks and the kids take them and they design pieces to a puzzle. Each one is different. Each student comes up with their own design and after creating them 3D, and they can get in here and they can move this stuff around so they can see this is how this is going to fit together and this is how this is going to work. Then what they get to do is they get to create a file to where they go, okay, does it work? And once they've created it, then they get to actually build their part virtually. And then they'll also get to build it physically with little wooden blocks that they'll get to glue together to find out how well they've actually done on their project. And so hopefully you guys are interested in engineering. We also get to use the VEX Robotics. Uh, you see the game table set up back there. We've got some simple machines that we've built over on the right, some pulleys and some winches uh, to see about how things go and force and lift and all the different aspects that go into that. Uh, and then in engineering part two, when we get into the VEX, you actually get to get into computer, uh, computer coding. We teach you the software language of Robot C so that you can go in and you can enter in code into the computer. It shoots it to your robot and then your robot uh, performs commands that you've given them. Uh, if you want to see this in real life, how this actually works, how many of you guys at home, you guys already subscribe or your parents subscribe to the Disney Plus? Yeah, I thought so. Okay, you've probably not gone here yet, but you should. In, if you go to Disney Plus, there's a little link in there where you can click on Nat Geo, okay? National Geographic, uh, they do a lot of documentaries and stuff. They actually did a documentary about the Mars rovers. We sent two rovers, NASA sent two rovers to the planet of Mars and they were up there for a really long time. They were only designed to last and work for a short period of time, and then they completely exceeded expectations and they lasted like seven times longer than they were supposed to, okay? But the cool thing is what we do with VEX where you sit at the computer and you type in the commands and then send it to the robot and we get to see if it works, that's exactly what those NASA engineers were doing. They were sitting at a keyboard and they were typing line after line of code and then shooting it across the universe and while they're sleeping at night on another planet these little robots are picking up these signals and they're carrying out and executing the commands that their engineers back on earth have sent them so engineering can open a lot of doors for you guys we hope you'll give it we hope you'll give it a shot but if engineering is not something that just really excites you don't worry we've got a lot of different uh, career pathway options here at North and we're going to do our absolute best to help you find one that is going to be interesting to you and that you'll be able to enjoy and then when you get here to North we're going to help you succeed. So do you guys have any questions for me about engineering or about North Harden in general? Yes sir? Um, does this class help you get to AC3? Yes it does. So there are there are two classes that you would take here at North uh, intro to engineering, which is uh, engineering design and principles, okay? And then the second one is principles of engineering. So the first one we're going to go through the design process that's on the wall where you start with a problem and you work through to find a solution. And if you get to this step, it's a lot of if-then statements. If this happens, then we do this. If this doesn't happen, then we need to move backwards. And then after principles of engineering, then we move on to EC3 where you can go over there and they've got uh, civil engineering. They do uh, some computer science stuff. Uh, we've got aerospace. So we've got some guys that are doing flight and stuff like that over there as well. So, but yes, to answer your question, this does lead directly to uh, the engineering pathway at EC3. This is our, um, I don't know, they used to call it like home ed back, you know, a little while ago. But um, this is kind of, it's, it's, 
I don't really know how to describe the class. It's just like a class where you, you pretty much learn life skills. So, you know, you're going to learn about accounting. You're going to learn how to sew your own clothes. You're going to know how to fix your own stuff. You know, this is just really the class where you, you, you really learn about it. You, and I mean, I suggest that, like, you know, if, if you don't really know what you want to do in high school yet, I suggest you take this class because, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you guys. You know, some of you guys, you guys have fashion. So, you guys, you know, you guys like to dress up nice. But I mean, think about it. Let's say, you know, you break a button on a shirt. I know every time I break a button on a shirt, I probably throw it away, right? Or I take it to my mom and I ask her to sew it. This class right here is gonna teach you guys how to how to sew your own clothes. You know how much money you could save if you just didn't throw it away by just fixing your own stuff? Or I mean think about it. And you guys come in, I see a lot of you guys wearing a lot of name brand stuff, Jordan, Nike, Adidas, whatever, whatever. But I mean, have any of you guys ever tried thrifting though? In all honesty, no lying. Thrifting. You ever heard of it? Thrifting, okay, so thrifting is where you go to like different stores. And you go in and you know you buy like kind of like discount stuff, but you make it match for yourself. So I mean, you know, rather than having to pay, you know, the big name brand prices, you can walk around looking like, man, you know, I, you know, I'm cleaner than a stick, man. You know, nobody else can touch it like me. Without having to pay as much, you're just doing your own thing. And that's the biggest thing about North Harden here, is that we believe in letting people be themselves. So here at North Harden, you know, you're not having to like, you know, hide behind a curtain or you're like, you know, oh, I'm afraid somebody's gonna laugh at me or whatever, whatever. We're all friends here, we all family. We all have the same common idea of being a Trojan. That's it, it's all it comes down to. No matter, you know, what sport you play, whatever your height is, whatever your race is, it doesn't matter. You know, we're all family here and we all believe in expressing yourself. So I'll talk more about that later. I'm Ms. Kinder. Um, I teach money skills, relationships, fashion design one, fashion design two, fashion design three. Um, welcome to North Harden. Um, so, um, what I'd like for you guys to do is I'd like for you to see what my students do in the class, not what I would do as your teacher. So um, come on in, touch and see and feel what the students would do if you were a student, what you would be doing as a student. So come on in and touch and see what the students would do. It's this stuff over here as well. In the fashion and interior design All class, we, um, my students are going to be learning how to do interior design and they are going to learn how to do a scaled floor plan. Um, and so after they learn how to do a scaled floor plan, they will be learning how to do color schemes. And then they have to pick out their furniture styles. They have to pick out what, what curtains they want, what furniture style they want. They pick out um, everything that they want. Just kind of like an amateur designer on HGTV. They have to put it all together in a design board and present it. And this is an example of that. If we were to flip this over, this would have a student's name on it. Okay, so this is an example of one, and then this is an example of one. So both of these are examples of exactly what it would look like. Okay, so this is an example of something you would get to do if you were in that class. Um, so how many of you think you're too old to play with dolls? Be honest. Are you too old to play with dolls? <laughs> okay. So we use uh, Barbies a lot in fashion class to talk about proportion of clothing um, on the human body. And then we also talk about how clothing has changed over time and the evolution of clothing. Um, so one thing that I do is I give my students a doll, I give them a time period, and I say, okay, create the clothing of that time period. Um, these are all done by students. They're done with no sewing skills. So if you look at these, there's no sewing skills on these. Um, so this is the 1990s, the Renaissance, the 1970s. No sewing skills are done on those at all. Okay? Again, something else that's really fun, really exciting. You learn about the history of the clothing, and you learn how clothing has changed over time. Um, so this is another example of a student's project right here. She wanted to learn. This is her vision. We taught her how to do the pattern, we taught her how to sew, taught her how to do everything, and then she competed with it. She went all the way to state competition. Um, in relationships class, we're currently learning about like abuse, and preventing toxic relationships, and we're learning about how to prevent divorce and how you know weddings can actually cause divorce. Um, and money skills, we're talking about identity theft, and that's what we're gonna be doing today in my class. Um, if sewing is something you enjoy, this is something that my advanced classes are going to be doing. They, they design these, and they sell them, and they collaborate. If it's something you enjoy, but you're like, I don't know how to sew, I teach you how to sew. I teach you how to do everything. Okay? I, I teach you how to do everything from beginning to end. Okay? So, 
Um, what it, when you wear your clothes, what's one of the first things that break on your clothing? Um, my, my mm -hmm. What's the item on your clothing that breaks? Uh, pretty much just any access to mm -hmm. It's usually the button, right? Yeah. And when you buy your clothes, your button, your clothes usually come with extra buttons, right? Or pretty much the string. Yeah. So today, I want to give you the opportunity to learn how to sew a button on. So who would like to learn how to sew? I don't know. So, I want to introduce to you Addison. Addison is a sophomore and she is a fashion level two and fashion level three student. And um, she also competed in recycle and repurpose. She took denim and flannel, which are also two of the most wasted textiles in the landfill. And she won regionals with her repurpose. And she's going to help you learn how to sew a button on. So who would be like to be first? Come on up. There you go. Okay, so first things first, you're going to make sure that your needle is all threaded the right way and correctly and stuff like that. And then you're going to go through the first hole, whatever hole you want to go through first, and you're going to push it all the way through. And Yeah, push it all the way through. Okay. And then once that's all done, you're going to go through the hole that you didn't already go through, so the second hole. From the back? Yeah, from the back. And you're gonna pull it up. Yeah. I'm confused. If it makes it easier for you, you can lift the button up and then just push it, and then just push the needle through, and then direct it that way. Can't find it. Okay. So then once you do that, you're gonna go back through the first hole again. And you're just gonna repeat that same step going from the front to the back. Hey guys, I'm so sorry. We're kind of behind schedule, so we kind of, we might have to let this one go. I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> See y'all. And then you just keep doing that, and then you have your button. Yeah. But that's basically it. All right, guys. So next we're about to go to is the ROTC room. Any of you guys interested in the military or anything like that? Any aspects? You are maybe a little bit. What you're gonna do is you're gonna hear from some of the cadets today. Uh, we have different teams. Rifle team. Um, we have uh, exhibition team, drill teams, color guards, and when the uh, cadets are going to tell you a little bit about that. All right. First of all, this is Tara Arnold. I'm Cadet Second Lieutenant Tara Arnold. Um, I'm the commander of the rifle team and co-commander of the exhibition team. Uh, in ROTC, you do. Just keep talking. Uh, in ROTC, you do a lot of different things. You have a lot of different teams. Uh, it. ROTC really motivates you and kind of makes you like a better person. Rifle team, you get to shoot the rifles, which one's behind you. Color guard, you get to do uh, different events. Exhibition, you get to flip rifles. This is one of them. And he's also co-commander of exhibition. But ROTC is just a fun class that you get to do. And this is a very great class, especially for you younger. You, uh, well, you guys, if you guys end up joining ROTC, You'd be called cadets, so like freshman, you'd be a let one, sophomore, you'd be a let two, so on and so forth. But even just besides that, you know, it's just one of those classes where it just helps you get through high school, honestly. You know, um, we we really have a lot of fun here, and um, it, it, this class is not meant to teach you guys, you know, to, you know, oh, I'm gonna be in the military or anything like that, or anything like that. I mean, honestly, this is really just a great class to, it's to motivate citizens. That's, that's, that's really all it is. And it's just to teach you guys about different aspects of life. So if, this, if that's something that may interest you, or if you do plan on going to the military, this would be a great class for you. My name is um, Cadet Captain Dinah Seligan. Um, I'm a senior in ROTC. I've been here for four years. And ROTC, it started off as a rough program for us freshman year because we didn't have a teacher. And um, our program started to get more solid and um, steady. And it's been like the best part of my high school life. Like, um, it's always my place to come to. The instructors are like, um, a second family to me. I can always talk to them about anything. We might not always see eye to eye, yep. but they're like, at the end of the day, I know that I can trust them and come to them about anything personal. Um, the, you make a lot of like friends who become family in this class. We're all one big family, no matter what color you are, what background you're from. Um, we're all like a one big family. You make friends with a lot of people that you wouldn't expect to be friends with. And like they're lifelong friends too. Um, a lot of us are joining the military in our senior class. 
but it's not ROTC isn't necessarily about joining the military. It teaches you morals and discipline, and um, it teaches you um, skills for life. We had a financial class last year. Uh, my mom actually taught that class. Um, we do um, PT on Fridays. We do lab days on Thursdays. It's a lot of um, hard work that goes into ROTC, but at the same time, you have people there to guide you through it and help you and stuff like that. The program is best if you get involved. Um, if you're in ROTC and you kind of just like sit in the background, you don't participate, you don't join teams, it's, you might not get the best experience, but if you join like Raiders or Color Guard, you get to go on trips and you get to have fun. And you get to experience a lot of things. Yes, um, our senior year, if you make it to your senior year in RTC, you get to go on a trip to um, West Virginia. And we went whitewater rafting. And we didn't have to pay for anything at all. So that's that was fun. Um, we do events like there's state fair parking at the beginning of the year where you get to hang out with your friends all day. You get to park cars. And we get to eat chicken <laughs> and stuff like that. Um, let's see. We have military ball coming up this weekend. Every year, you get to go to military ball. You get to dress up and look all nice. You can even bring a date. And um, you get to have fun. We got um, really good food and stuff like that. It's a dance. And then we have a um, drill meet that we host, which is really fun, at the, um, March. Yeah, in March, close to the end of the school year. Um, yeah, we have a lot of events that you can part participate in and have fun. And yeah, that's all. Oh, and we also have change of command at the end of the school year. I don't know if any of you guys have um, been there. If you were in JLC, you get to do um, you get to come over here for a change of command at the end of the school year. I did JLC when I was in um, middle school. I did it sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. I was in the elite class, and we had a lot of fun there. So like that kind of really prepared me for um, ROTC um, in high school. And just in all in all, ROTC is a great class. Like I was saying, guys, this is one of my two pathways. So I'm in the ag pathway that we just left with Mr. Ritter. And this is my second pathway, which is a military pathway. So like you said, like we like I said before, you guys can do more than one pathway if that's what you choose to do. And um, honestly, the, the best experience I have to you guys to tell you is that you guys can come to high school and it can either be the best four years of your life or the worst four years. The way to make it the best four years is to do stuff. Be active, have fun. Welcome guys. So I'm Miss Geyser and um, this is digital literacy part B. So this class is part of the business and marketing pathway as well as the IT pathway. We um, are covering Microsoft Office, um, specifically Excel and Publisher. Every day when they come in, we have bell ringers and you do typing.com, which helps develop your keyboarding skills. And then we work our way on up to um, Excel and Publisher activities, starting with some Battleship, maybe some pixel art, which helps you develop um, cell location, memory, and identification. So you're going to notice that a couple of different things are going on in the classroom. Um, some groups are working on typing.com, some are working on Hour of Code. We've got some other students who are working on Microsoft Office Specialist Certification. By the time that they finish, they will be certified in Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. That is also an industry certification for their pathway. So when they graduate, they'll be able to put that on their academic or professional resume that they are Microsoft Office Specialists, which hopefully will set them apart from other applicants. Ben's going to talk to you a little bit more about um, some other things going on in the business department. Did you guys get to see our school store already? Yeah? You like it? Exciting? Okay. That class is called Entrepreneurship. It is um, a school-based enterprise, which is part of our DECA organization. Um, so you guys probably call that a club. Um, we have two clubs, if you will, in the business department. It's DECA and FBLA. Um, some different things that we have done with DECA uh, this past year, we went to Nissan Stadium and got to tour the um, Tennessee Titans football field um, and meet with a lot of their marketing executives and do a behind-the-scenes tour, which was super exciting. Uh, one of the things that we'll do in the spring, we'll be going to um, Holiday World, they'll do a behind the scenes tour, maybe ride a few roller coasters, get a little wet in the water park, but ultimately they're going to see how an amusement park or the entertainment business works, which is really exciting. Um, are you going to talk to them about uh, Yeah, we'll talk to them about entrepreneurship. Okay. Um, so pretty much entrepreneurship, it's a class where um, we're self-sustaining. We have our own coffee shop coming up soon. Uh, students run the whole business, pretty much. So yeah, that's just fun. Are any of you guys interested in business? Nobody? You're interested in business? Well, if you take this class, this is digital literacy. We run a school shop, we make t-shirts, um, we sell tumblers, we sell pretty much anything that you need on a regular basis that we have in the shop. We usually set up in the back of the cafeteria during lunch and um, 
students are free to go and uh, check out what we have. But we make our own t-shirts, our own designs, so we set our own prices. So pretty much the sky's the limit when it comes to business classes here at North Harden. That's just something unique about us. You're going to see um, the different equipment that we use. Um, if you want to start to make your way around the back, there's a heat press. We've got our different um, vinyl machines and things. Our students are designing those t-shirts with their design software. They're cutting those out on the vinyl cutters and then they're heat pressing those. So start to finish, they're creating those. Um, we have different, in entrepreneurship, we have different student managers and cashiers. So essentially they do that. They make the schedule. They assign their workers. They make sure that their workers are providing good customer service and working their shifts that they're scheduled to work. We also work with our special education population. Uh, we have a 100 coordinator and she goes and works with our special education population to help them develop workplace skills within our school store. So we're really excited about that partnership. Um, a new project that we have going on is we're going to open a coffee shop for our teachers and staff. So they're going to be able to come in before school and get iced coffee or lattes, tea, juice, whatever they may want um, so that they can get their breakfast and things before class started because have you ever heard that a caffeinated teacher is a happy teacher? Yeah, it's true probably. So um, we're so glad that you guys are here. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask any of, your, any of our students. Um, they would be glad to talk to, the talk to you about our classes. This is going to be your ag room, so your, <clears throat> your ag science, stuff like that. Here in North Carolina, we have a lot of different pathways. One thing you guys are going to have to remember is that in able to, in able to do your uh, pathways, you have to have at least four other classes. So between your four years of being here, you just have to take the class at least four times, which is, um, which is plenty doable. And, and you can major in uh, two different career pathways and still get your four, your four credits for it. So that's your way that you're able to get it done and do it like that to, to, and able to be career certified and to get your career pathway. Here's our second ag class. So this will be Ms. Hall. So this is, this is going to be more of you right here, your, uh, your vet science. My name is Ms. Hall. I'm one of the agriculture teachers here. Um, I teach plant science and animal science. So plant science wise, if you're interested in planting flowers or planting vegetables, this is a class that you would take. We actually have a greenhouse out there. So we plant the flowers, we grow them up, and then we sell them right after spring break. So you get a lot of hands on on how to grow flowers and vegetables. And then you also get the marketing and business aspect afterwards when you sell the plants. Okay, so if you like that kind of stuff, we got lots of stuff out there. We have raised beds um, that we grow vegetables in. We have blueberries, we have blackberries, we have grapes, we have different types of fruit trees. We have all kinds of stuff for you guys to actually get hands-on learning with, okay? Now, animal science is kind of my forte. It's what I really like. Um, this is a vet science class, and they actually are dissecting uh, pig hearts and pig organs. So what you're looking at is from a pig. Um, this class is really good for anybody that wants to be a vet or a vet tech. Right we get a lot of kids that want to go into human medicine. They want to be doctors or want to be nurses. Okay, We're all going to have an opportunity in just a minute to get in and see what's going on. But my class has been learning about all of these organs and what they do in our body. Okay, The reason we use pigs Pigs are very compatible to humans, okay? We use their heart valves, we use medicine from pigs. So your insulin, your epinephrine, from your EpiPens, your cortisol, okay? All these things come from pigs. This is about the same size as what's in your body right now. So this is inside of you right now, okay? Um, this heart is about the size of our heart. Your heart's about the size of your fist, okay? So the girls, are going to tell you a little bit about what they see and what they've learned in class and what you guys are looking at. And then if you want, when you get ready to leave here, um, you can actually touch this and be able to see what it all feels like. Okay? From top to bottom, you have your trachea, which goes, this has, it goes into your lungs, and, it closes and then when it flaps it back. Does anybody know what that's called? Do you all know, remember? That's your epiglottis, yeah. okay? That it closes word. when you swallow something. It goes down through your trachea. It goes into this tube, which is your esophagus. It goes down to your belly. So it's like those little stir, stir straws where you got two tubes. That's what your throat's like. One goes down to, the, to your lungs and the other goes to your belly, okay? So that's what they're sitting here trying to explain. Um, go on and tell them the rest of what goes down through the rest of the organs. 
So it will go down to your lungs, which is this pink soft tissue. And then you have your liver. Does anybody know what your liver does? Uh, what does your liver do? Go ahead. Does it digest this? Yeah. No. What does it do? Anybody know? What do you What does it do? It does filter out something. Anybody know? All the bad. The toxins. Yeah, Any toxins in our body. Anything toxins. that we get too much of. And then this. What is your food? This is your gallbladder. You don't really need it. Like, if it's not working properly, the doctors will cut it out. And you can live without it. So. And then here you have your heart. Your smaller one is your ventricle. And this one is your aorta. Your ventricle is a whole lot smaller, which is this smaller part, which has the blood that comes back in from your body. And then your aorta goes out and has your blood go from your head to your toe. So your heart is constantly working, so it's a big muscle. That's why it's so this side's so big and this side's so small. So your heart's not really shaped like you draw on paper, right? It's lopsided. This is a big muscle. It's got to push your blood all the way through your body. So it's constantly pushing, pushing, pushing. What happens when you work out? It goes back to your muscles. Okay? You, your muscles get bigger, right? When you work out all the time. This thing's working all the time. This is a big, huge muscle. Probably one of the strongest in our bodies, okay? Constantly working. So this side's really, really under a lot of pressure. So that's why it's a lot bigger, because it's got to push the blood everywhere. This brings the blood back through it's not under so much pressure, so it's not really as large. Okay, so that's why our, our hearts are kind of shaped the way they are. It's really it's heavy because it's a big old muscle. It pushes your hand away. He doesn't like his head being touched. I rub him like a dog. He sends me a It's the parenting class, uh, li uh, lifespan, that's what they call it. But, hey, that's gonna be the perfect class for, you know, teaching you guys about early childhood births. It's going to teach you guys about not getting pregnant in high school. It's going to teach you guys all those viable lessons you guys need to know. And to keep you informed, and you know, I mean, accidents who happen. So let's say you didn't end up becoming pregnant in high school. That's all right. You know, you can still be successful in life. We have the perfect class for it. It's going to teach you how to raise a baby. You guys are going to go on a baby simulator. You guys are going to freak out and be like, oh, my God, you know, I don't know what to do with the baby. But it's all right. You know, it's all just for fun. But we're just going, if you guys come in late, what's up, y'all? This is the, uh, that's the uh, main office. So, you know, if your parents come pick you up, that's where you're going to go. And as you guys see, we're just kind of making a big old loop around. This is going to be our youth service center. So if you guys ever have any problems when you get here, um, you know, family problems or whatever, whatever, the youth service center is the way to go. I'm going to show you guys the uh, counselor's office. So you guys end up becoming a senior, you guys are going to fall in. You guys may be uh, student aid, stuff like that. So, you know, if that's something you may want to do, you better come through. Let's see if any of our, see if any of our counselors are here. All right, All right here go the man, Chris Ashley himself, y'all. Here go just some of our, yeah, here go some of our uh, great counselors here at North Harden. And you guys go and say, hey, you guys better get a little look in there. Yeah, so this is just kind of what the guest counselor's office looks like on the inside, just trying to give you guys a good little look around everything here at North Harden. Um, you know, if you guys just ever have a problem, you're just going to come in. Sign your name on the clipboard, and they're gonna call you down out of class, and you'll be ready to go, set. So let's go and go down to our next classroom. First of all, welcome to my classroom. My name is Miss Cheatwood, and I am one of the family and consumer science teachers here at North Harden. Um, I have the opportunity to teach two pathways: um, early childhood education and fundamentals of teaching. Now, I want to kind of just get something out of the way. In the future, who thinks that you might become a parent at some point? Okay, so statistically speaking, most of y'all are going to become a parent, whether that is you get pregnant and have a baby or you partake in making a baby. It's going to happen to most of you at some point, hopefully way later. But um, my class a lot of times gets looked at like, especially the boys, they go, psh. I don't need that class. Yes, but you don't do. Be the one doing it. Um, you do. I can tell you, you do, because it is truly one of those most basic life skills that you're going to need. Now, play along for just a second. Who knows what it takes to get your driver's license? What do you do first? Uh, you take 
permit? You take a test. You have to take a little paper test to prove you know what it's like to drive and all the, the road signs and all this. So you take a paper test and then for like six months you have your permit and then you know that, that practice driving, you do what? Again, you take the driver's test where you have to get in a car and drive and prove you can drive safely before they give you your license. What do they do if you have a baby to prepare you for having a baby? Nurses check that you have a car seat, but once you get past that, what do they do? They send you home. You strap that baby in a car seat when you're leaving the hospital and you go home. There is no preparation to becoming a parent other than classes you might go take on your own. Nothing is, nothing's forced, nothing's a requirement. They just let you go home. And we are expecting people to raise our future generations with no preparation at all. You have three things you have to successfully do to drive. You just gotta make a baby to have a baby. And that is scary to me. And it is something that I go through on my classes over and over, is that you need to know this. You need to be able to not only know when you should have babies, but then once you have that baby, how to care for it. Now, past that, past that little surface level, most of y'all are going to be parents and you need to know it, my class also prepares you for potential careers. If we look at the names of my pathways, we have early childhood education and we have principles of teaching. Both of those sound like you're going to be a preschool teacher or you're going to be a teacher. But there's a lot more that can go into that. That's not everybody's ideal career. And I've taught and I've done these presentations long enough to know that's not most of your futures and that's okay. However, does anybody see themselves having a career where you will work with kids at all? Maybe you want to be a nurse. Maybe you want to be a pediatrician. Maybe you want to be um, a child psychologist. Police officers have to work with kids. Um, doctors, lawyers, all these people that are in all types of careers at some point are going to have to work with kids. So having a background knowledge of kids and their development can be super helpful. Now, um, I don't want to talk at you the whole time, and I want to give you kind of a real-world perspective on this class. So I pulled a couple kids that are actually seniors right now, um, and they're going to tell you about the day-to-day -day life as a senior in one of my pathway classes real quick, and then we're going to get to a little simulation. All right, I'm Kylie. I'm here at North. I'm in the chemistry department. Um, I make lesson plans. I help them with their assignments when they need help. I grade papers, I do labs. So you get to act like an actual teacher being a senior in high school. So I'm Taylor, I'm in the social studies department at North Middle, I'm with Ms. Parker. I'm there from first period until fourth period. Um, I'm held to the same standards as she is. Uh, just because we're at different schools, we're teaching different grades does not mean we're not held to the same standards. We act exactly like a teacher and listening to all this is probably stressing you guys out and seems hard. Um, it's not. Honestly, Ms. Cheatwood makes it very easy for you guys to get through the class and get what you guys need to know out of all of the classes she teaches. My name is Chastity. I'm actually not in theirs. I'm in early childhood education, which means that I want to work with little kids. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So what I do for three whole class periods, so from like 8.40 to 1 o'clock, I'm not here. I go to North Park and I actually take care of babies. That's exactly what I'm doing. They have a thing over there that you can go over there and work with little kids. You can do preschool, kindergarten. But not only am I over there just having a good time, not being here, I'm also earning certifications certifications that will help me in the future. I already have a guaranteed job at North Park for next school year. Even though I'm only a high school student, having those certifications will help you. And if this is something that you're wanting to do, you will thoroughly enjoy this class, I can promise you. Because I want you all to kind of get some hands-on experience, that's what my classes are like, hopefully on a daily basis you get to do something, I want to do a little simulation with the babies. So here in just a second, I'm going to turn them on. You're going to hear it chime. That's it turning on. And then you're going to hear it cry. 
Now, just like a real baby, it's going to whimper, and then the cry is going to get louder and louder and louder. So you're going to have to take care of it and figure out what does it want to make it stop crying. It is either going to need a diaper change or it's going to need a bottle. So the very first thing you have to do when you hear it cry is scan the chest. So just move this around the chest until you hear it beep. It's not on yet, it's not on yet. but when you hear it cry, you'll scan and it will beep. Then you got to figure out how to make it stop crying. So again, change its diaper, try to feed it, maybe rock it until it stops crying. So let's turn them on. Just so you know, the diapers, these little things on the diapers, you have to scan them on their bottom. There's yeah. sensors all over their body. That's how you change their diaper. You take the dirty one off. You put the you clean one on. Right all right. So it's on. just by the sensor. All right. So they're turning on. You're going to hear them cry. Uh oh. Did you scan it? Oh, yep. It's whimpering. So scan the chest. Just run it. There it goes. Now you got to figure out what it needs. There it goes. Did you try the bottle? Yes, not Oh, no. it's starting to cry. It's okay. I used to have one of my cousins. I think it's There it goes. It wanted to eat. If you break its neck, it will the bottle. Okay, I'm going to turn them all off <laughs> just because you've done the little simulation now, so they should be turning off. You can lay it back down. <laughs> Did you feel that stress a little bit, like it made you tense and you were nervous? Imagine that is a whole weekend of your life. And then beyond that, if you become a parent, that's your life. Like, that's a lot to handle. So if anything, I hope this kind of shows you a little glimpse into my class. I have um, thoroughly enjoyed having you all as freshmen. I encourage you to take Facts Essentials. It is our freshman class. It's designed to give you a little bit of info about everything. And then once you become a sophomore, you can go on and take the rest of my courses. So thank you for coming today. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Who, who said they like to cook in here? Me. You, okay, guys. This is your culinary class right here. Yes. This next one right here. This is going to be our last class. So I'll give you a few minutes to walk around and visit with each table, okay, so that you can learn a little bit about uh, what we do in our foods and nutrition program. Do you guys have any interest in cooking at all? I would open my own restaurant. Okay, that's awesome. What about eating? You guys are interested in eating? Most of us like food, right? So we talk a lot about food in this class. We start out with safety and sanitation, so you learn to wash your hands. You learn about why it's important to pro follow proper food safety. Anybody have a reason why we should do that? How about a foodborne illness like salmonella is a very popular one, right? So we learn a lot about foodborne illnesses in here. Then we move on over to measuring, where they learn how to measure properly with the right tools. And then we talk about kitchen equipment, so you learn about how to use the right tool for the right job so you don't hurt yourself. We also talk about seasoning and meal appeal. Why is seasoning your food important, guys? To give it flavor, to make it taste good, right? So some of the things we've cooked in this class is honey mustard chicken and mashed potatoes. You learn to make a French style omelet. Next week our class is going to have a brownie challenge where they have to make their own brownies and plate them and design them. And our classes are mixed up. So we have freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors in here all working together. So the last unit that we're studying is called etiquette and table setting. Do you guys know what etiquette is? It's manners. It's going out to lunch with your friends and knowing what fork to use or where you do, where do you put your napkin? Oh, like a fancy restaurant. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You put your napkin in your lap. Or have you ever been to one of those tables and there's like seven cups on it and you don't know which one's yours? Yeah. I get to teach you how to use the right cup, okay? So this is important. It's an important life skill. It prepares you for your careers, not just life, everyday life, but at, at Thanksgiving where you get to set it up nicely. But when you go to lunch with your boss,
you know how to act. You know how to tip properly. You know how to ask the right questions. You don't have to you know, have the right, yeah, and have the right conversations at table, at the table, okay? So I'll let you walk around and visit with all the students, okay? And check things out. Please don't be afraid to ask any questions. <laughs> Um, that's that's the culinary class, like like they said. You can take it as a freshman. I think it's called um, basics of uh, culinary or uh, something like that. But your counselor, if, if that's something you guys are interested in, in the culinary pathway or the cooking pathway, then that'll be your um, your transition counselor will be able to help you guys out with that and really get you guys set up. I was well, quick question: Did you guys all learn something here today? Yes. You guys get interested in a little bit of stuff. Let me, what's something that you're interested in? Maybe you think you may do here. Okay, perfect. What are you thinking about? Culinary? Yeah, culinary, too. Culinary? Culinary and business. Okay, I like that. Choir. Choir? Oh, thank you. All right. Culinary and business. Culinary and business. Perfect. What are you thinking about? I'm still thinking. Still thinking? Man. All right. What you thinking about the back there? What, 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 what career path are you thinking about taking here when you get here? <laughs> Nursing? Okay. What you thinking about? Culinary, you right there. What are you thinking about? Oh, I like to go parenting. Parenting. Uh, I like choir. Choir. Perfect. So I did my job here today. All you guys came here today, not knowing what you want to do, and you guys are able to leave with something that you know you want to do.